Yeah, so uh, I guess it's time for us to move on to the next presentation. Um, just uh, remind everybody and uh, request your participation in the survey uh, in the chat box. Um, so um, let me introduce the second uh, group for today. Um, so this is uh, a pres uh, well, it's, it's a capstone project plus uh, uh, NASA Mines competition. Um, so the three students, Jaime Rios, uh, Teddy, and Carlos, uh, work on this project as their senior capstone project. Um, but also they um, um, successfully competed in the uh, NASA Mines competition, which is a national uh, undergraduate design competition. So, uh, so uh, this their, their topic of their project is uh, generative design of a novel uh, additively manufactured solar array system for powering space equipment on the lunar surface. So, uh, as you know, the uh, NASA wants to go back to the to the moon. Um, so they want to. Um, so this is a project helping to provide solutions that. Uh, to supply power when the uh, when the astronauts uh, go back to the moon uh, to do research over there. So that is um, the overall theme of their project, and their focus is on how to design the system that ha can have a very compact uh, size, also uh, very low weight, uh, because for space travel, that is the uh, most critical thing for transportation consideration. So. Um, so with that, I, uh, I also want to mention that uh, this project was selected by NASA and was provided the funding support from NASA uh, Mines competition to support and uh, to procure some equipment, as you will see later in their presentation. Uh, they actually built and uh, design and built this system uh, in, at the UDC lab. Um, so now, Jaime and your team, are you ready to share your slides and start your presentation? Yes, sir. OK, please go ahead. Yeah, please put it in uh, presentation mode. Oh, uh, Can you do just one? Swap yeah. slides there. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. A modestly, it's on ah, the there we go. Sorry, there we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, good morning. Um, <clears throat> as Dr. Zhu mentioned, uh, my name is Jaime Rios, along with uh, Carlos and Teddy. We were uh, working on a generally designed uh, solar array for working on the lunar surface. Um, our uh, capstone project was also an entry into the NASA Mines competition. The NASA Mines competition was a a um, initiative to uh, work with the Artemis program. Uh, the Artemis program is a series of six missions starting in this summer and uh, culminating in 2024 with the return to the moon. Um, just as a side note, it's named the Artemis program because Artemis is the twin sister of Apollo. Apollo was our original moon mission, and this one will feature the first female astronaut to land on an extra uh, terrestrial surface. So the ultimate goal is to develop a long-term habitable science outpost on the lunar south pole. Uh, it experiences sunlight 100% of the time in the summer and 70% of the time in the winter. So solar power is going to be the most viable option for powering a habitat and the, uh, it's, uh, the experimentation that's going to be going on there. Now storage for power will be equally important because the lunar night can go as long as 96 hours. And some of the permanently shaded regions of the South Pole are the coldest uh, recorded regions in the, in the universe. So in order to support that mission, NASA has identified the need for a large array, a large surface area, lightweight solar array that can be easily deployed, repacked, and redeployed on demand. Uh, the array needs to, and its components need to be able to withstand dust, radiation, and extreme temperatures. So, lunar regular, uh, which is the lunar soil, is made of compacted minerals and, and metals and is extremely abrasive. It gets inside of mechanisms and destroys machinery. So, in order to combat that, 
They're looking for um, mechanisms that are completely encased or require very little moving parts. Finally, in order to maximize the low incident angle of the sunlight, your array needs to be able to get 10 meters above the lunar surface. So onto our project project scope. So uh, we are to create a scale working model of the large diameter array. Uh, it can rotate uh, 360 degrees as well as decline of 45 uh, degree. Uh, the array will be designed using uh, geometric origami uh, to get the needed surface area for power requirements, but also maximize the packaging factor for uh, easy transport as well as storage. Uh, we'll be using generative design uh, to create the rib structure. Uh, this is to maximize and reduce the weight of our structure, uh, but as well as to keep it uh, uh, the system stable. Uh, we will be using uh, additive manufacturing or 3D printing uh, to generate the prototype from our design studies. And our final result will be measured by uh, the amount of weight reduced with generative design and additive manufacturing versus uh, uh, traditional design and traditional manufacturing methods. So, next. So, uh, uh, because of the need of a sol solar power collection, uh, the structure need to be able to uh, uh, complete different functions to find the optimal position. So, these functions include the array being able to lift a certain height above the surface uh, to decline a 45 degree angle, a fully rotate 360 degrees, and to deploy and retract its arrays. So, to simulate these uh, functions, we first have the 3D printed center cap that's in the middle, up top. Uh, which uh, where we uh, attach the paracords that wraps around them, the panel when it's fully retracted. Uh, next, we have uh, the centerpiece that serves uh, as a connection between the array structure and the base. Uh, we then have the bevel gears, uh, which serves as the declination gears that allows the array structure to tilt 45 degrees, and this is driven by a stepper motor. Uh, we also have the hydraulic cylinder that's connected to an hydraulic pump, uh, and it's uh, controlled by a control command. This is to adjust the height. Uh, also, the aluminum turnable bearing. This is to uh, take care of the rotation, and that is also driven by a, a stepper motor. Uh, next. So uh, this is our base tower. Uh, so first, uh, we have the cil uh, hydraulic cylinder uh, with the hydraulic uh, tank containing the hydraulic fluid. Uh, next, we have uh, the hydraulic pump that pumps the fluid into the piston along the control of the height of the array. Uh, and then we have the power supply, and finally the turnable bearing that uh, rotates the structure, the very bottom. And then next, we have our declination gear, so this serves as the part that uh, uh, declined the whole structure. So uh, we first up top, we have the declination shaft. Uh, and then we have a bevel gear pinned onto it. Uh, it is held together by uh, two flat parallel plates uh, that, are, that are screwed onto the base. <coughs> Excuse me. And then in the middle, we have the stepper motor that drives the gears. And finally, at the bottom, we have the base plate where everything is held in place. Uh, so the stepper motor is connected to a command control, which uh, allows uh, us to control that as well. And next. So uh, for the array design introduction, so several uh, technologies exist that are all large deployable arrays to be packed on the ground and deployed in space after launch. So after these architectures rely on uh, either thick functional panels that are also structural or dedicated external stiffened uh, deployable structure. Uh, the image on the right shows the deployable truss uh, mass for uh, the space station. Next. So uh, this is our array geometry. So um, uh, it was selected uh, because of its uh, conformity to uh, cylindrical shape uh, when stowed, uh, radio symmetry, and as well as high packaging uh, efficiency. Uh, it is important because uh, it, we need uh, as less uh, area and volume as possible when we're taking uh, when we're sending uh, devices or anything to outer space. And uh, on the right, uh, we have the image of our original 3D model of our array structure. Uh, it's made up of uh, two panels, which are A and a B section. Uh, the folding pattern uh, 
um, shown in the figure uh, shows uh, the mountain falls uh, in the blue dotted line. The mountain falls is the connection between panel A and B, uh, where they concave. The valley falls shown in uh, red dotted lines are uh, panels A and B, or where they converge. Finally, the panels uh, ends are shown uh, in gray uh, in the gray dotted line. The uh, spiral C falls. Uh, shows the tension cable uh, connection uh, between the panels. The flyer pattern geometry is intended to work for paper uh, thin materials similar to parachutes or a blanket. The thickness uh, of our panels uh, to take a different approach. The solution was to have flexible joints that will allow the panels to overlap each other. Rigid foldability with uh, non concurrent axis, uh, where the axis are shifted uh, to, to enable the amount of fold or uh, removing material um, each uh, fold. The dynamic envelope of the flasher pattern uh, for the deployment and retraction require a new joint design idea a hinge system uh, that will allow the zero thickness array to fall at the valley folds uh, shown on the figure to the right uh, for a thick panel system a new joint system uh, to be analyzed um, so the joint design uh, along the mountain falls and valley falls uh, and needs to be able to, to fall 180 degrees so here on the right, we have an image of uh, three designs uh, we came up with. Uh, as you can see, at uh, the very top, we have uh, the spacing, which is very important for us. Uh, we see the first design uh, to be half an inch uh, spacing between each other, and at the very end, the design, which that's the one we went with. That's where it's uh, zero distance. Next, we analyze the joints between the panel joints. Uh, we'll uh, be responsible for the uh, stiffness of the solar array. Uh, so no extra external structure will be necessary. The joint will also need to be uh, dynamic uh, to move along the axis. So here we have two designs uh, for the joint connect, uh, connection. The first design has one degree of freedom but it does not help with rigidity. The second design, uh, we also restrain uh, the mobility to only 90 degrees uh, for it to rotate. So we went with the, the second design. Finally, uh, the joints along the mountain fault must be dynamic, uh, moving along the axis to allow the joints to reposition during retraction deployment. So the design the joints, um, the spacing is fundamental to allow the joints to move along the axis of the mountain and by default shown um, in the picture to the right. To self deploy, the array uses a uh, cable driven uh, springs preloaded structure. Uh, it uh, added to the structure to combine uh, the rotary uh, mechanism to cell deploy and cell retract. The array uh, does not require external support. Other the cable uh, intentions and the panels are in compression. Uh, during the deployment, uh, the spring uh, added along the mountain valleys produce, produce a sufficient force to allow the array to cell deploy. Uh, to retract the cables must um, overcome the force exerted by the torsional springs. The array then uses a uh, stepper motor to rotate uh, clockwise to retract the array with uh, a set cycle to prevent uh, over tightening. To deploy the system, then again uh, using a stepper motor rotates counterclockwise, and it's set to stop um, at a certain position where the, the values are 160 degrees for optimal strength. Uh, 
uh, to reduce the weight and uh, maintain the stiffness required for our design. Um, we use a uh, generative design that is a design <coughs> process. Designers or engineers input design goals into, into this software, uh, along with parameters such as performance or spatial requirements, materials, manufacturing methods, and cost. The software explores all the possible permutations of solution by generating design alternatives and testing them to see what works and what doesn't work. So on the figure to the right, we have uh, the before and after image. The original yeah. panel, the original panels um, are made of aluminum tubing, um, quarter inch. Uh, they're welded uh, at the miters. That's using traditional manufacturing. And on the right, we have the same uh, aluminum, the same aluminum, but in this case, using AM additive manufacturing. So you can see here, the original panels, uh, as designed, uh, were, were set with all of their, all of our uh, study was based on using aluminum 6061, which is the most common uh, metal used in uh, satellite and rover materials uh, for aerospace. Um, so we did all of the studies based on that particular metal, assuming that the full size model would be built that way. Um, we did the original design. We set all and checked all of the weight to see how much it would weigh originally. This would be done using traditional manufacturing because all of these parts could be quickly molded and then stamped or easily manufactured using some type of uh, programmable water jet or CNC cutter. Using the generative design study, we got multiple iterations of uh, we would set the original constraints of how much weight would be felt from each direction, how much force would be felt from each direction in its actual, in its uh, regular use, the bending moments on each of the pins, and then we set specific geometries that couldn't be changed, which were the pin locations and the overall surface area. And the AI generatively, uh, uh, iteratively does finite element analysis, removes material and does it again, until we get to the very uh, the very minimal amount of material that still meets our uh, requirements originally set. As you can see here, we go through uh, 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 multiple iterations and we're finally given multiple choices, which we can modify to fit whatever we need. Once the design was done, we then go back and model the pieces as they are in the new set you can see here, even with double the weight put on it in a model study, we only received a one and a half, uh, uh, a one millimeter deflection, and this is based on our our uh, scale model PET G. In the aluminum model, we got less than a half of a tenth of a millimeter deflection. Once we got ready to create the actual prototype, we had to do some slight modifications for print. Uh, on our uh, FDM style printers, we were having regular uh, print failures, and it's because, as you see here, the rounded tip of the pin side was such a fine point of contact on the, the print platform that we were having adhesion issues. By adding a one millimeter thin plate to the bottom of it, we could get um, successful prints 99% uh, of the time, and the plate was easily snapped off and changed no part of the function. Uh, on a metal bedded printer, this would not be an issue. Support and adhesion is generally not a concern in uh, DLMS printing. Uh, as you can see here, once the design was finalized, we, we went into full fabrication mode. Um, we used the school's three available uh, FDM printers. All of them were uh, Lulzbot series printers. We had two uh, TAS workhorses, one TAS 6 and I had my personal TAS-6 here at the house in, in uh, full production mode. Um, Teddy and Carlos were cleaning them as fast as I could print them out. You can see here we were setting up all of the parts and keeping count to make sure we had the full set when we were ready to go. 
once we had all the parts printed, we got the prototype constructed. Uh, we used coat hanger as our pins. And as you can see here, we glued or, or used adhesion to attach uh, uh, a, a silicone adhesive to attach um, sheets of aluminum to the top of our array. The aluminum is a scale model density and weight of the PV cells and their equipment that would be attached to the top of these panels. So they worked as a good analog to show that it can hold the weight of that particular, uh, that, that additional weight. Oh, Carlos, you want to describe what we're seeing here? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so in the video, we're, we're showing um, that no external support is necessary for the array to be fully functional. And uh, that also reduces the packaging factor. So uh, external support necessary, obviously, um, uh, that's a plus for us. Daddy. I think you can play the first video. So, okay, so the first video shows, this was actually taken yesterday, um, shows uh, Jaime and Carlos using the commands to lift up the, the array um, at a certain surface. I don't exactly remember how high this one goes. But yeah, that's what the first video is. Uh, you can play the other one. And on this one, it's showing the array going down. Uh, with the control commands. Um, there was actually a little bit of a leak at the bottom, but and we already cleaned it up, so. All right, good. All right, and this is the uh, full opening of the array. So we had one failure in the end that we couldn't overcome, and that's the fact that um, despite what they'll tell you, the K values of springs that fit that small are, are just not correct. We could not find a spring that was that small and that and stiff enough to overcome the the bending of the uh, of the metal. So when we finally we went back and we redid the math, we figured out where we went wrong, and we found the the K value we would need to overcome all of it at this point. We would have had to have custom ordered it, and even if we had done that in the very beginning, it wouldn't have been. It turns out custom ordering springs is about a two-year process, apparently. So we uh, we just we simply couldn't overcome it. But the entire array does work. It simply doesn't work automatically. Oh, sorry. Yet. It doesn't work automatically yet. We're still working on that. Okay, we have uh, just a couple of minutes left. Okay, we're at the end. And there's the array fully unfolded. So the final results, the weight loss, uh, the maximum reduction we got on, on uh, was on a, uh, part A3. We got almost a 70% reduction. The very, even at the bottom, we got a third reduction on on, on our least reduced part. So we're, we're getting good weight reduction on each of these pieces. We averaged 56 across panel A and 50 across panel B, and we got a total 53% weight reduction. That's based on aluminum 6061 again. <laughs> and as far as our packaging factor, when fully deployed, our array is 1.6 meters in diameter. When fully packaged, it's 35.5 centimeters. That's an 80% packaging factor. So ultimately, what did we get? Uh, we, we reduced the weight by 56%. At $2,700 a kilogram, uh, by reducing only the array right now at 56%, we have a, a significant opportunity to take a huge amount of savings simply out of the shipping. That doesn't include the material cost and the fabrication cost that we save. The manufacturability remains intact once the generative design is done. With added manufacturing, we produced 108 work-ready pieces in less than 10 days. And the current state of the industry allows for immediate implementation of this level of technology for the full size. The packaging factor was significant. We got a 78% size reduction. That means more equipment 
or less, uh, uh, more crew, or less space in a in a capsule being shipped to space. And there's no compromising functionality. We're mission ready with this type of project. So ultimately, our study showed that there is possibility for significant weight reduction using generative design. We took 53% across just the array. There's no trade-off in function. Generative design allows us to input the criteria needed ultimately, and we won't deviate from that. And optimization can be taken even further. Once we have this design set with the rest of the tower, we can then turn around and generatively design the wire paths, the mounts, even the PV cells designs themselves to get maximum use of our packaging factor. The rapid prototyping and fabrication can be done with current state of the industry platforms. We did it with desktop commercially available platforms. Uh, further research can be done into maximizing the entire design. We have a design for the entire tower, the mobile base, the telescopy tower and the array. If we go back and use the generative design systems on the rest of the total package of our project, we could reduce the total weight of the system and we could get more of those systems in space, which would allow for more power and more uh, exploration on, on the lunar surface. Thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge Dr. Zhu for advising us on this project. Uh, also, uh, our funding was uh, additionally, um, of course, from the SEAS department, but we were funded from the uh, Camp Star program from the NASA Mines competition also. Uh, thank you uh, for listening, and we will take any questions. Okay. Um, any questions, comments from the audience? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, presentation. Uh, I have a, a question. Uh, uh, at the end, I really like the, the design part of this uh, project. Uh, even though it turned out, uh, like you mentioned, uh, the screen which you like to use is uh, actually of the standard uh, type. You may need to get a custom screen, but also the type to uh, you know manufacture screen. Maybe you know it's gonna surpass the you know the time you expect it. So do you think about other alternative solution for that uh, rather than use custom, uh, you know, spring uh, to uh, to afford the array, maybe, you know, use motor based uh, like uh, control to fold the, the, for example, for the uh, array. Is that the kind of a, a viable solution? It, it is. We, there was a, another design for a, um, a uh, how do you say, servo-based. Uh, it was an array of servos that could open and close individually the pedals. Um, ultimately, it was discarded because we were trying to simplify it um, to to ensure the least amount of maintenance. Oh, that, that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, another question is, uh, like you mentioned. Uh, the, the material of this uh, project uh, is using the aluminum CT61. Uh, is there a difference between, you know, there's another high strength uh, aluminum alloy, is 2024. Uh, you must have, uh, you know, decided there's a, a, you know, a reason to choose, uh, for example, CT61 over 2024. Uh, I'm just curious what's the reason for that. Uh, the, the main reason is because of the uh, we went with the standard that NASA listed in their in their um, initial rubric for the Artemis program, and sixty sixty one was listed as the most common uh, material, um, and it was already a profile in the uh, system we were using, so it it, it was uh, simpler to, to go with that originally. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions or comments to the to the student presenters? All right. Um, just to uh, remind everybody, um, please fill out the survey um, in the in the uh, using the link in the chat box. So. Um, so maybe I'll just ask one uh, quick question here. 
So for uh, I know for you all, you um, you know working on this project, you know you had a different deadline uh, from NASA uh, Mines competition. So uh, but afterwards, you know I know you still worked on uh, until probably last night to finish um, making this uh, entire actuation mechanism work. So uh, let me ask you. Uh, this is kind of a uh, similar to. Um, the question we asked for the previous group that, um, you know, re reflect on what you have done for this project. Uh, what area you wish to kind of learn a bit more during your undergraduate study, which may help your, you know, this project. So if you can just uh, share a little bit of your, you know, um, your experience on that. Uh, I know for me, um, the most challenging part of this project was the enormity of it. I think when we really got started, um, it, it was deceptively simple. Um, we, we, all, we had a design, we had an idea, we, we understood the concept, but we weren't prepared for the, the enormity of a project of this size, the budgeting, the planning, the timing. The, the details that went into the number of mechanisms involved to just make the array work uh, was 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 a little overwhelming at times, and so I think um, I, I think had uh, I think maybe before a capstone project, just just really having to walk through the the from beginning to end planning, budgeting, timing really do get all of the stuff together, deal with the, the once-in-a-lifetime freezing storm that shut all of our, our uh, shipping down at one point. I mean, it's things you can't plan for. So I, I think that was, to me, the biggest takeaway from this project is that um, even something of, of, now for us it's big, but compared to a NASA project, this was nothing. And it was, it was enormous. So um, I, I can't even imagine something on the scale of, say, the James Webb Telescope or the the Dragon X, I mean, just the enormity of a planning to undertake a process like that. Um, I, I think that was a thing that I definitely could have been exposed to before I had to hit the ground running. I, it felt like so that was that was that was one thing for me. Um, you know, uh, Teddy, Carlo, uh, mine is what I said. I mean, mine uh, specifically, I'd say one of my really big challenge on this project was uh, the fact that he had just so many connections that's one thing you had a lot of parts and you know when you have a lot of parts that means you have to connect them and when you have to connect them you need connectors so i feel that's one challenge so again like what jaime mentioned earlier that uh, planning is really important when you're working on a, on a project this big and uh, yeah i think that's my biggest takeaway planning yeah i think for me it was the same the same uh, the same thing as them uh, maybe uh, a little more of a system engineer uh, in this case would be really nice uh, just to not only just a simple design but uh, this designing thinking of uh, assembly and designing thinking of uh, all the components at the same time. In this case we design for uh, different panels uh, to work accordingly. So, yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah, this is indeed a very complex um, project itself. Um, NASA actually uh, has quite a few, you know, <laughs> companies working with them to develop this um, technique for their uh, future space missions. Um, so yeah, but I think you guys did a good job um, tackling one aspect of it, in particular the the solar uh, array system, uh, the structure and the uh, the folding mechanism of it. So um, so good, yeah, good uh, um, attempt to you know solve this complex problem. Um, so uh, yeah, so. Before I move on to uh, the next group, uh, is there any additional comments or uh, questions from the audience? Uh, 
All right. So uh, if there's no other questions, I uh, would like to uh, introduce our next um, group.